like us, is alive. <laughs> you don't have to venture far from our cities and towns. To slow down and go back to nature. So refreshing. You may know me as an actor and descendant of Arundra and Arabana people. But nature is my medicine. Holly's a writer. They have that mythic fairy tale quality. Whose inspiration is the magic of the natural world. Come with us to a place in Tasmania where land meets sea and ancient rainforest thrives. We'll explore how we're in a relationship with everything around us. Meet one of the most amazing trees in Australia and be introduced to ancestors. When you're in nature, do you ever have the feeling of being connected with everything around you? Perhaps it's because we're created from the same elements as the natural world. We are nature. North of Hobart and east of Launceston, we're going to be exploring the place known by three names. Larapuna, Tebrakuna, and the Bay of Fires. Venturing inland to the Blue Tier and heading northward to a black peppermint gum forest. Everything in nature is in a relationship with everything else. This brilliant lichen is in a long, slow and ancient conversation with rock. Gently etching away the surface to create sand and soil. Lichen is a great teacher of relationship. For it's a marriage of algae and fungi. The fungi provides structure. The algae photosynthesizes food and together they flourish. We've ventured onto sea country. This coast was once abundant with seals. But now there's only one colony left around here, on an island called St Helens. We're hoping to catch a glimpse of them. I think that every second rock is a seal. Oh, how's that smell? Yeah, they live here. Here you go. <laughs> Look at them, look at them. Can you see them, Holly? Oh my God, I can see them! <laughs> look at them. <laughs> wow, they're beautiful. There's quite a few of them. I've never seen them in the wild before. No? Well, there's not many seals in Alice Springs, Holly. No. Oh. Mass exodus. <laughs> Here we go. They're coming, they're coming. Here we go. Look. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them checking us out. They have a high sense of curiosity. Yeah. They're circling us. They're very curious. They might be as yes. curious to yes. see us yeah. 
as some of us are <laughs> to see them. Mm. Humans and seals don't just share the quality of curiosity. We also share a common ancestor. And like us, seals evolved on land. But around 30 million years ago, they took the evolutionary leap into the ocean. It makes me wonder if this feeling, there's like a really old recognition. Uh, you know, familiarity. Yeah, almost human-like. Almost human-like. They're incredible spirits. They really are. There was a naturalist, Henry Beston, who once said, animals are not brethren. They are not underlings. They are other nations, caught with ourselves in the net of life and time. I feel lucky to share this planet with these playful creatures. A British explorer, Tobias Ferner, gave this stretch of coast its English name, the Bay of Fires. And it wasn't because of the colour of the lichen. As his ship sailed past in March 1773, he saw many campfires along the beaches and headlands. Countrymen and women living their life. So this was a seasonal gathering place for the clans of the Northeast. First Nations people have lived here at least 42,000 years. But the arrival of Europeans brought devastation to Tasmanian Aboriginal people. Many believe the ancestors, the old people, are still connected to this country. Ya Palingana. Grandfathers, grandmothers, ancestors. Emma Lee is an academic and Trawal Way woman whose ancestors have lived on this country, Tebrakuna, for millennia. We are here to honour you. Look after our visitors, please. We will be respectful. Wuleka. We're on this beautiful boundary between women, sea country, and men, land. In Tasmania, our governance is quite simple. Women are of the sea, men are of the land, and everyone is from night sky. That's our creation. Ancestors came to country. They fell to country as stars. A woman fell with her children into the water. Sky country, as our ancestors. This is a story I know. It's told they came down to Truana and picked up some soil and they took it back up in the stars and they raised up our first person, Palawa, kangaroo man. There is no difference between us and kangaroo grandfather. No difference between us and our brother, Tasmanian devil. This. <laughs> this is family. It's our ancestors that we're looking after. Kinship is the thread that connects us to place. For Trawalway people, there is no notion of humans as separate from anything else in nature. Everything's connected by the thread of kinship. And kinship allows us to be brothers and sisters. And kinship means that we can be gentle with each other. 
our night sky ancestors have given us the lessons, the base lessons. Are you respectful? Are you treating a country like family? Quite interesting. I should imagine astronomers would say, of course we are from the stars, the atoms in our bodies. Western knowledge says that 13.8 billion years ago, our universe began with the Big Bang, which released the stardust and gases from which all things evolved. If humans could trace our family tree back billions of years, we'd find we're related to everything on Earth. We've left the coast and traveled around 50 kilometers inland to an area known as the Blue Tier. Walking along these mossy pathways, it feels like we're in an enchanted forest. The ground is covered in a coral lichen that's nicknamed East Coast Snow. The Blue Tier is about 600 metres above sea level. First Nations people have long been coming here. Oh. They follow a line. All the way up. They go back down that rock there. Can you see them? Yeah, yeah, look at that line. They're all quite uniform. Elders believe these circles were carved by clans people of the coastal plains or high mountains. They continue for almost 20 metres in perfect alignment. So the carvings go down that boulder, over, over this boulder. Down there. Down here. I can see them following here. Yep. Travel along there. Here. There they are, there. Wow. While the exact age and meaning of these circles is not known, elders believe they show that this was a place for ceremony. You got this vista, looking over everything. This would have been a meeting place, significant. In the late 1800s, the Blue Tier was known as Tin Mountain and was once the world's largest open-cut tin mine. The forest is reclaiming it. A few kilometres down the mountain is an old mining tunnel whose heyday was in the 1890s. Many of the miners who came to Tin Mountain were Chinese. Oh. See all the way down there? Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, wow, this is the tunnel. Wow. It's kind of eerie. I love how it's just taken it back. Ferns must love it here because it's so damp and misty. And the moss. It's such a fertile ground for things to grow. Wild. Well, it's gone back to who used to own it originally. The Chinese miners who worked here were renowned for living together cooperatively sharing the spoils of their labour with one another. 
bushwalkers in this forest have found remains from their camps. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. What do you what, what do you imagine? Oh, well, I'm gonna, I'm cooking bowl. Yeah. From their homeland, probably. Yeah. I think this one's my favourite because of the colour. But maybe it's like a beautiful soup bowl. Yeah. They had their meals in there. Their meals in. You imagine having a nice hot cup of soup after being out working all day in a tin mine here. Yeah. Together. Wow. Gondwanan rainforest once covered the Australian continent. This is one of the few pockets that remain. There's a giant who lives in this forest. A couple of kilometres from the mine is the Blue Tear Giant Walk. The giant is said to be centuries old. <laughs> there she is. There she is. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Majestic, isn't it? Yeah. She's queenly. Don't get a crook neck. No, you can't see the top. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> hmm. That is the biggest tree I've ever seen. Yeah, being in the presence of it, it's amazing. This swamp gum is believed to be the widest tree in Australia. It began life as a seed the size of a pinhead over 600 years ago. And for some creatures, she is their entire universe. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, she smells good. I love hugging trees. I don't care what people say about tree hugging. I love it. Listen to that. Can you listen to that conversation? Certainly not one-sided. You can feel the spirit of the tree for sure. It's strong. That's beautiful. continue this conversation. There's a book kept inside the hollow for writing messages to this gentle giant. Dear Queen Gumtree, thank you for the centuries you've made oxygen and provided a home for birds, butterflies, animals, beings who are part of your story. Is there a tree near you that you wish to write a message to. It doesn't have to be a grand tree or a grand message, just something from your heart. Take a photo of your message and share it with us on social media at hashtag backtonatureau. As we leave this gentle giant, my heart's a little heavy. For this incredible forest that surrounds her, 
is not protected. We've curved northeast to the coast, where the ocean has created the inlet of Anson's Bay. Here we've been invited to a nearby black peppermint gum forest. Jamie Graham Blair is a Trawalway Pekana. He studies marine science, and this black peppermint gum forest is his family, his kin. Ya Polina, Warren Tatakamuna Krikani, Milai Dinamana, Pakanangini Taipani Lumi, Pai Wuta, Nara. Taipani Lumi, gather Kiplinairi, gather Lina and Kanapleila Lumi, Mina Tanapri Tanapri Miladina Lumi, Luta, Tina, Pakanangini, now Mina Tanapri Tanapri Nina too. Beautiful. Get a whiff of that. You can, you'll be able to smell that peppermint smell in that. It's so beautiful. That it gets its name from. It almost beautiful. feels like vapor. This is antibacterial. I reckon this smoke is a bit like immigration kind of ceremony. When you come in, you, you've got all this different energy from the places you've been in, and this smoke is almost like an opportunity for you to reground yourself and connect here. So these trees, when I look around here, I'm seeing my mob, I'm seeing my people. My ancestors were often cremated within these big scar trees. Not only releasing their spirit back into the, the country, their very physical being would be taken up by these trees. And so when we smoke them, I'm physically and spiritually introducing you to those old people. I really love the way that my old people viewed country. They didn't view it as something separate from us. Every molecule in our body, every atom, every protein, every acid comes from somewhere, right? Our physical being is made up of hundreds and thousands, millions and billions of little tiny components that we get from the air we breathe, the water we drink and the food we eat. Every plant you see here, every bird you hear singing, you know, this stump that we're sitting on, it's very possible that we're sitting on atoms that were within my old people, my actual ancestors. You're a rarity of your generation. <laughs> Thank you. There's this amazing joy when you find a young person, step back into their country and they step back into their old people and their language, and they rebuild themselves from the inside and become stronger than what they were before. And there's a great beauty in that, and you can see that in Jamie. We're honoured that Jamie is showing us a sacred ancestral site. To protect it, the location cannot be revealed. It's massive. It's huge.
There's a light covering of sand, but this entire hill is formed from seafood shells, which people discarded from thousands of years of meals. Imagine us three like having a feed of like shellfish, you know, abalone, oysters, cook them up on the fire. You know, we might have like a pile this big, you know. Look at that, how many feeds you reckon there might have been having here? Oh, the number of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this place here would have been visited at least for the last 10,000, 12,000 years. People say, how long you been here? Here you go. Long enough to build that. Long enough to eat all this. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful, hey? Often called middens, many Trollway people, including Jamie, prefer to call it a living or gathering site. Every shell that's on this hill, they've gathered those shells from the ocean. That's the true. women went out and got these warinas and these oysters and all those beautiful seafoods that are about, and they would bring them back and cook them up, and all the kids would run around here, you know? Oh, definitely. You can see it, eh? Yeah, you can see it. People in community and language, song and dance, children, history, and that's what was happening here. Yeah, it's really interesting to see where different groups of people place their value. I think with my mob, value is placed on gathering and family time and spending time on country or sharing knowledge and inviting people in and dancing and holding ceremony. You know, this is a really valuable place. I know the amount of people are watching this here. I feel a lot of pride when I come here. A lot of pride. And a lot of sadness. You know, I'm reminded of both the past and the future. Thinking about how these places, how these hills were built. But also how... Um, it's not a big thing that we, we still do. I think about a lot of different stuff. It's, it's pretty big. I feel the old people are here. The echoes of their gathering. And when I feel them, I feel kinship. Sharing food is one of the best ways to strengthen kinship. Auntie Alma Stackhouse was a revered Tasmanian elder and her family have generously shared the recipe of her celebrated kinship cake. After beating 500 grams of butter with one and a half cups of sugar, you add lemon essence and gently stir in four eggs until creamy. Sift together self-raising flour and custard powder. Add to the egg mixture. Place in a camp oven for around 45 minutes to an hour. Allow to cool and slather with butter icing. Enjoy with a strong cup of Billy tea and the company of kin. <laughs>